for my real hip hop heads only. For the loving and faithful adherence to this most precious and important of sports, the gentleman on the left side of your screen needs no introduction. Unfortunately, this next piece of legendary oratory is made necessary for the purposes of educating the legions of crusty-eyed, misguided, half-braid, half-afro crumb snatchers like your dumbass little cousin, or to put this more succinctly, this intro mainly benefits those niggas whose ears are broke. The man's name is Illa G. Brooklyn is the borough. And how foolish it is of me to attempt to exhibit any level of verbal repertoire when an MC of invaluable linguistic acumen sits before me. But that's exactly what I'm about to do. Under my obligation, under Article 3, Section 14 of the United Constitution of Real Lyrical Hip Hop Shit, I am charged with the responsibility of giving our best and brightest their flowers while they still here to smell them. This particular MC is most accurately described as a microphone punisher. His jabs feel like power punches, and his power punches is knockouts. That's who we talking about. Pain game at a thousand. He got those darts that make your jaw drop every line, and he don't need a beat to do it. On the contrary, my almighty affiliates, the beats need him. Probably the highest compliment I could pay to this iconic rhyme spitter is to say that he is what we mean when we say this is New York hip hop. He and that last phrase are synonymous. So without further ado, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome for the first time on the Mike Power Show, a most definite ongoing threat to a sucker's tranquility an ambassador of hip hop worthy of his own wing in the museum. A man it makes no sense to feature next to unless you want your whole shit jacked. The man alternately known by the masses as vocabulary Hercules and the man I have bestowed with the moniker of no bars off, AKA Mr. Slap Holes Eat Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a God Certified gold recording artist, Illa G is in the building. Yeah. yeah. Hell of a hell of a hey Illa G. I couldn't be more nervous right now. I'm just not gonna even lie. <laughs> it's just based on what you put down, I used to do this back in the day in the park myself. I've been in the studio a couple of times. And on my best day, I could never get half of what you are on your worst. Uh, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. Again, I met you backstage, Sony Hall, Rock Marciano show. You was incredibly gracious. Mm -hmm. I'm All kind of people walking through there. I turn around, boom, it's Illa G. Yo. Um, that was a moment for me. So thank you for your hospitality at that show. Let me ask wow. you this. You have a long history in this game. How are you still this lyrical? Uh, I'm just com being competitive, I actually feel like. I'm just naturally a competitive person. I used to play basketball, sports, and all that other shit. So it's just naturally competitive. Hip-hop is a competitive sport, so. When you so when you when you put pen to paper, is that something that's going through your mind? Like you don't want to take that L. Like the other lyricists that's out there, you want to be better than all of them. That's on your mind, right? Okay, I want to have the weakest verse on the song. Well, I mean, it's you, a, gotta, you gotta feel like you, you know, it's it's no more. That's like going to a different arena and you crack the home team and you look at the crowd like shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Nothing destroying a person on their song. Real talk. And you do that. Uh, you do that a lot. Yo, Gold Soap is crazy. That's that's a newer joint, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Heard Gold Soap, okay. Yeah. Um, when you heard that beat, because it's, it's sort of cool, jazzy, in my opinion. What was your approach to writing on that? I am the GOAT. I am deaf in the trench coat. Living like an overdose. Listen. Never approach taking showers with gold soap, moving like a whole coast. Really? What? You Kevin 
hard jokes A couple dollars on your throat if you want smoke Smoke See her aiming through a scope Killer training My flow is like it's raining on the dope Illa, Illa To be different Just to be, just to be a little different And the flow a little bit different on it You know, everybody is jumping on You know, I, I feel a, a lot of people is jumping on the Griselda wave So I just want to make sure I sound different Right Right. Okay. Um, you have a very distinct voice. Um, did, did it take some people, you? Some huh? people say, a lot of people say this. Yeah. Did it take you a while to learn how to use that? I mean, it just sounds regular to me. I can't believe, you know, I'm glad people feel I got a dope voice, but I don't hear it. Ah, man. It sticks out. You, you always know when it's illa. Like, you don't, you don't have to say your name on the track. When we hear you come on, we already know what it is. What, what, what's fried apple juice? Sir, uh, fried apple juice basically is your you know how dope your flow ha has to be. You cannot fry a liquid, so if you can fry apple juice, you have a, a very good flow. Okay, <laughs> slap holes eat bacon in that order, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what <Where the, laughs> um, if you're from Brooklyn, yes. Who is on your Brooklyn Mount Rushmore? It would have to be Grandmaster Flowers because he invented hip hop. Hip hop started in Brooklyn. That's right. I said it. Okay. A good question. I never even thought about a Brooklyn Mount Rushmore. Uh, Fab Five Freddy. Wow. Um, I would say Houdini. They did a lot. Oh, and, you know, turns out I think Mr. Magic was from Brooklyn. I'm not. You probably gonna know better than me. Don't get me lying. <laughs> But I think Mr. Magic is from Brooklyn. What was it like for you growing up in some of the projects? It was fun and it became it became like a gladiator school. It was fun when we was younger. Yeah. I was actually going to talk about that in my thought of the day about how kids don't, you know, kids don't play tag or you know, around the world or we used to have kick the can of so many games we played, but everybody's so serious now. It's like no one plays any games anymore. But, and then after that, it became like a gladiator school because pretty much you just can't let nobody, you know, you take a slug and do nothing about it. You're going, you're going to be a victim. So you can't be a victim. Right. So I think you, you probably was coming to age at that same time in the eighties. I always, a tribute to when the crack came in that everything kind of got turned up. So you, you was probably around, saw that transition happen when you was growing up. There. Yeah. Are you, are you on duck down right now? No. Okay. Or is there some affiliation from in the past with duck down? I have, I have a good relationship with duck down, but. Okay. Cause it's like, when I look you up online, I'll type in illa G you see duck down seems to pop up. Um, <laughs> Distributed, they distributed a few projects of mine, but I have my own label and moniker. I'm more entertainment. When you made the song 90, which is phenomenal. My rap is like laying in the ghetto on a hammock. My metaphors is causing panic. My eyes slanted. I just booked the Chinese chick that looks Spanish. And me getting head in the car was so romantic. And it was finished. Did that feel like magic when you listened to it back? I mean, it just... Shouts to Lars Pro for uh, creating 90. But when he gave it to me, I was just like, this is too easy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was just like the first thing I thought about was 90s hip hop. And it just made me feel about 90. So I just said, okay, let me just rhyme. Like <laughs> it was 90, 1990. You on it though. How long did it take you to write that? Not long. Like less Not than a day? Probably about a, uh, maybe an hour, hour or two, maybe. Wow. Because I just like I just don't I just don't sit and write because I'm doing other things at the same time. So uh, I'm liable to be writing at red lights. I'm liable to be writing while like writing a web series. I could be writing at any time. I get an idea. I have a uh, where's I have a I have a device I call Eva. It's an old cell phone. This is Ewa. If you can see, this is Ewa. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, AKA my rap phone. And you that's where you put all your notes in there? 
Yeah. Because I got notes all over the place. I did not forget where I put my notes at. Like, I got them here. I got them in my phone, my iPad. <laughs> I write them on the fridge. You know what I mean? Just remember stuff. Um, and as I get older and older and smoke more and more, uh, <laughs> this is what it is. But I got I to gotta smoke so that nobody gets hurt, including me. High alert. Man, but that's another crazy joint. At the end of that song, you say, these are your lyrics. Side note, motherfuck Oprah and a partner. <laughs> you got... <laughs> As an aside, I say, it came out of nowhere. I'm already enjoying the cut. And then I'm like, did, what did he just... What are your feelings about Oprah? And I'm assuming you talk about Gail. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yeah, because they, you know, at one time, they was just... You know, y'all cool with Harvey Weinstein. Y'all don't do no stories about them, but you do about a story about a black guy that go through the same thing as like y'all just skip over the Harvey Weinstein shit. So yeah, me and my dudes talked about that a, a lot a few months ago. We were saying the exact same thing. Um, because she went at Russell too, very yeah. eager to go at Russ. You know what I mean? A little bit too eager, you know what I mean? And there's, there's enough people, right, doing that kind of thing that. Like sometimes in this game, this little YouTube type thing I'm doing right here, people make their name off of do you gotta take that kind of shot, right? To make your name. Oprah been the queen of media since the 80s. She don't mm -hmm. need to take that shot, you know. So for her to go ahead and do that anyway and to lean into it like that, uh, I felt like it was an agenda at play. I might have to edit that part out. I don't know. Can you talk about your connection to uh Mob Deep? Yeah, uh, went to high school together. Okay. Went to high school together, got, became cool. They was pushing for, you know, they used to go to Coney Island to record music and make their demos and stuff. And, you know, I was around for when they did that. 13 years ago, you came out with Bullet and a Bracelet? Yeah. Um, in an interesting video too, because at the beginning, um, you do a PSA and you say, I would like to let all y'all know, I am not affiliated with Mob Deep. Reason being, because I don't want to be fucking affiliated with Mob Deep. Y'all yeah. had a relationship, y'all was cool. Y'all was working together, collabing, you know, and then something happened and you guys didn't see eye to eye on something. Is that correct? Yeah, for a time being. That's still my brother, but I right. was just uh, I was upset or something. He something he said to me that offended me and it just made me fall back for a little bit. Okay. This is, he didn't even remember saying it. But it stuck with you. How long did how long did that break happen before y'all was able to kind of talk about it and reconcile that situation? It was I mean, it was a good little minute because he got locked up after that, so and, you know, we never, like, we spoke, I spoke to him while he was locked up. And, you know, you know, we talked about a few things. I thought he knew what I was upset about. And he thought it was something, he thought it was something completely different. And we never got to it until uh, I had a birthday party in Queens. And, you know, this is when I had the idea to do the web series. And he was like, I don't care. I'm, I want to be in it. He was like, I want in. Uh, Prodigy, bless his soul, is supposed to be Piccolo inside the show. And then I was like, yo, man, I just wish you never said what you said. And he was like, what, what are you talking about? I was like, what you said, like, you know, when we was in the car together. He was like, what you say? And, you know, he told, he was saying, he was like, just because me and you cool doesn't mean I, you know, doesn't mean I'll put you on a song. You know what I'm saying? That's a form of extortion. And I was like, how would you say that to me? Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I never came at y'all crazy, like a form of extortion. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I grew up on loyalty. Mm. And when I said it to him, the funniest shit in the world, he was like, I said that? I said, that don't make sense. That's the dumbest shit in the world. And we cracked and we fell. I was like, you don't remember that? He was like, hell. Wow. He said, I can't even believe I said that shit. I was like, yeah, you said it. I was like, why you think I fell back? He was like, I never knew. He was like, I never knew why you fell back. And we cracked up. And that was that. Wow. So y'all talked it out, worked it out like men. Um, 
the the web series. Um, mm-hmm. I want my audience to you know become aware of wh- exactly what you talk about. Explain the web series to me. Web series is called New York Minute. Uh, it's the main character is loosely based on me. Character name is Deuce Greg Smith Jr. And before he was incarcerated, he was pretty much uh, like a a not a cool guy. He was like an asshole. He did everything and anything. But once he was incarcerated, he's, you know, looked at books and studied things and find out that the streets is a trap. It's a government trap or whatever to keep, you know, to keep us locked up and not educated. And so he comes home and try to, you know, get his friends to realize that this is not the way to go. No, I'm good. I'm gonna fall back. What? The great deuce falling back? Fuck is the world coming to, yo? I just gave back 45 years. The eight years I did is enough. Go to jail a day, dudes. Come on, man, you sure? I'm sure, B. Shit is a trap anyway. What you mean? I mean this shit, all this shit. The peace, the drugs. The murders, the killings. But he's done so much dirt before he went in, you know, a lot of things could come out the closet. So basically, New York Minute is about change and how hard it is to change in a hostile urban environment. And where, where can my people see that? On YouTube or? Uh, you can go to Illogy.net and watch it. You can go to uh, Illogy TV on YouTube and watch it. But, yeah. On IG, you said... Omarion is a terrible dancer. Terrible. Did you see his BET Awards performance from like a few years ago back? I watched the uh, board. Uh, I think a video popped up. I just tapped it. The song was pretty dope, but he was dancing. And I was like, wow, who says this dude is a good dancer? To this his BET performance. He- he killed the BET performance. This is back in the day where he did like touch. He had a whole bunch of dances around him. I thought I thought about a video when he was like in the street and he was trying to moonwalk on his hands and feet. He looked like an idiot. And I was like, who the hell says this guy is a good dancer? Who the fuck said that? Amarion is terrible. Let's just say, I want to, you know, love him, this, love to see him get money, but as a dancer, he's terrible. What I'm not going to do, even though I disagree, is I'm not going to argue with Illa G. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> what is the biggest lesson you learned being in the rap game so far? Do it yourself. Okay. Um, how you pick your producers? If I like the beat. Right. Do, are, do people just DM you? Yeah. Okay. And so you're liable to work with just, if the beat is dope, you'll rock with it. That's it. Can't, no matter who produced it, if the beat is dope, it's dope. Okay. Um, what, what beat it? Well, it depends. Like, you know, I know what beats I like. I'll put it that way. The beats I, if I the beats I like, I'll use it. But you never know, you know, you never know, man, which which one could, you know, get you the stars to line up because mm-hmm. it's not you. You could pick what you like, but the fans will tell you what they want. Yeah. And I feel like you could get on any kind of beat. You don't mess with the drum list. Um, I know you said a lot of people riding the Griselda wave right now. How you feel about what's going on with the with the drum list? And is that something that you would ever kind of entertain? I don't feel like I've heard you on that. No, Um and I I I feel it originally all started with Ghostface and trickled down. So I mean I just don't I like drums. Yeah, drums in in the bass line is the heart of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you did the joint uh, boxing with Onyx, mm-hmm. Left Lane did on was on there. Shout to Left Lane and Jay Nice. Um, he was on there. Mm-hmm. How come I don't, I don't feel like I heard Onyx rapping on there? Because there was no Onyx rapping on there. So it's an Onyx. I'm confused. Then I'm oh, sorry. Followed at me. He contacted me and was asked and asked me how much do I charge for a verse. So what I told him was, you know, I'm not going to charge you anything. I have a web series, 
give me a scene for the web series. So he did so. He told me he wanted me and Sticky on the song. The rhyme I wrote was to try to off Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then stick, the, so we thought Fredro had called you because that was part, I think, cut out. Yeah, Fredro, oh. Fredro. Fredro okay. Found. All right. And so it ends up being an Onyx song without no Onyx voices on it. Uh-huh. It ends up being an Onyx song without any Onyx voices on it. Right. Okay. I mean, y'all killed it. I was just, I was way to got to the end of the song. I'm like, I didn't hear Onyx on here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my original, you know, when he told me it's supposed to be me and Sticky, I wrote that in mind to take Sticky face off. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Sticky and Fredro, but yeah, that's that's what it was. I mean, that's the that's the true MC thing, you know what I mean? So it's um how'd you get the blue how you get your blue check mark? Oh <laughs> they uh you gotta you, it's so much shit. You gotta do some technical shit. like you gotta have your real name. You could like uh, they told me I had to take down the slap posey bacon <laughs> and try to make it sense. You gotta have your face, you gotta take a picture of your ID. It took me fucking like three to four years to get that goddamn thing. Cause I well, I didn't know it was yeah, he was really doing that type stuff. It was like, oh yeah, the slap hosey baker, you gotta check that down. <laughs> you gotta you gotta sound good. like it felt like you gotta like sound clean and neat. And you know, you got you know why it changed to mom, you know, mom deep affiliate, so on and so forth. And it, you have to neaten it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we say it for you, slap holes, eat bacon. By this point, everybody knows. Um, and if they don't know, we'll tell them. Um, do you have a schedule or do you just drop joints like Pigeon Dookie? It seems like you just, it's always something dropping. I mean, you got to stay in the line. It's a different age and time. And, you know, you got to stay, stay out there. You know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to express myself. Because for a long time, I wouldn't express myself a certain way, you know, especially from, you know, coming from street life. And I was like, uh, so I learned to go back to an old elegy trick when I was, I call it philosophizing when I was doing like philosophy and, you know, I had to take the street shit out and just keep it like MC and philosophy, you know, basically how I felt about situations and thoughts about different things and just emceeing and combining the two. Got you. I saw the Doggy Diamonds interview, shout out to Doggy Diamonds. Um, and you talked about how, how you was back in the day. I'm, it's a quote here on my paper. If I don't know you, fuck you. That's how you was back in the day. What was the evolution to go from that guy to who you are now? Because you seem more calm and centered and not like, if I don't know you, fuck you. I've always been calm and centered. And you know, if I don't know you, fuck you. Still? Still. Okay. <laughs> it's it's all how you speak and approach. You did Mega Godzilla with Meta Man. How did that collab come about? Uh, that happened because of Swave Seva. The battle rapper shouts to Swave. We did a show in Staten Island. Met the man is a big battle rap fan. Him and Swave have a you know a relationship. Meth is amazingly cool. And soon as he introduced me to Meth, I was like, "Yo, you do a chorus for me?" He was like, "Sure." And then you know what I'm saying after I performed, he was like, "I definitely got you on the chorus." And I sent him the song, and he did the chorus, and he did. You know, once again, shouts to Meth because he did a scene for me on my web series too. You did the Tony Touch freestyle, which you killed. Mm -hmm. I'm spitting in the face of hoes. I'm a silverback because I got the ape shit flow. Ooh. I'm an ace in the hole with toting the full bow. I'm retarded. I'm driving a coupe with four doors. Aye. Niggas performing with no shows. I got a bad chick performing with no clothes. When I'm in black, I rob just like whoa. I spit colleges. My rhymes just like bro. Elegy was skipped past the skeptics. My skydive raps are drawn just like sketches. Black Thought was there. Um, and I, I, know you, I know you got a history with Sean Price. 
What mm -hmm. what's your mentality when you about to spit in front of a guy like Black Thought? I mean, take his head off. Everybody must die. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get impressed by these guys that's on that level? Nah, I, I think Black Thought is nice. That's why yeah. he has to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's crazy. Um, I, I try, but I rhyme like I couldn't get it. I wanted to rhyme every time Black Thought rhymed. Right, yeah. right after. And to see the thing that I'm most, you know, proud about out of all the things, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, out of all the things, you know, Black Thought, you know, Black Thought, Black Thought, somebody put in the comments, like, Elegy is the only one that was able to hang out with Black Thought. Bruh, when I watched that, that was amazing to watch. Because, I mean, when you talk about Black Thought, you talk about a seriously scientific tactician. That boy with the word. We've, everybody doesn't seen the 10-minute joint. You know, I've been listening to them dudes since, like, back in Philadelphia, Half-Life, them days. You know, I quote a lot of Black Thought lyrics. He just, he an acrobat with it. And you there with the confidence and just killing the game. Um, so y'all need to go check that out, too. The Tony Touch freestyle. Y'all going to see Illa G catch work. Have you been following this this Dave Chappelle drama that's been going on with the Netflix special? And did you see the Netflix special? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. What do you think about the controversy surrounding it right now? That's something you can talk about? The, uh, uh, those that claim they offended, um, maybe they should watch the show because I see what they're mad at. I watched it, you know, I've, and, I, and I'm watching some of the coverage in the news and I, somebody wrote, yesterday because that somebody was mad because he the line about everybody that's on this earth came from a woman you know the fact that he that he wanted to just define what a woman is that's somehow controversial that's i don't get it myself um i just wanted to hear your thoughts on that because i you seem like i gotta keep up with stuff uh there's a picture on your ig i think about uh with you and waka flocka I didn't expect to see that. Talk to me about the time you met Flocka Flocker. Um, he was, he came to a mall deep session. And, uh, you know, Waka Flocker, his mom's just from Queens. His mom is Deb, so yeah, yeah. From, And uh, he came to a mall deep session and he's talking. I introduced myself. I was like, peace, Illa G. He was like, I know who you is, nigga. Wow. You know, my bad. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I mean, that, no. that, that guy at one point was a, what you would call like a global superstar. Um, but he listens to those, those real lyricists, knew who you was. Um, yeah. <laughs> you knew who he was, I I assume. Not, I, I, I don't know, was you a fan of his work? Any of his songs? I, I, mean, I, like, I, thought, I like two rock songs. <laughs> Has some good songs, but his ad libs is the funniest. Ever. You're a big fan of Saturday morning cartoons and cereal. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. Right, you was talking about that. You was talking about that. You was lamenting that is that that's gone. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a serious thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a serious thing, and, and quite a few people agree with me on this situation. I do too. You about to start a movement? Yes, we need to bring back. You know. We need to start punching TV people in their face and bring back cartoons Saturday morning. With the PSAs in the middle, with the big block of cheese running around, singing the song, <laughs> Conjunction Junction, all that stuff. Yeah, Thunder Bob Barron. Yeah. What what is your uh <laughs> give me a give me your most legendary combination, like the the, the best serial pair with the best cartoon for you on Saturday? Best cereal. Well, top top choice. You have to be a professional to eat this cereal. You have to be a veteran to eat this cereal. And then Captain Crunch. The original the Captain Crunch. Original Captain Crunch. Little things like this. Yes, yes. You're right. Yeah. yeah that and let me see. Because if you don't eat it right, you're gonna. <laughs> Up the roof of your mouth. <laughs> so that is a that is a, a fresh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Newbie. And 
cereal eating when you complain about, oh, I don't like this cereal. Shit, fuck up the roof. <laughs> this is why whatever created us gave us teeth. Yeah. It. Yeah. So you, crunch, you crunch the cereal with teeth. Yeah. And knock the roof of your mouth, jackass. <laughs> the, none of the Captain Crunch lines is whack. Like the, they had the crunch, the crunch berry joints, them was hot. The, the yeah, peanut butter. Yeah, the, the peanut butter. Peanut butter left a funny taste in your mouth. I like the, the peanut butter, but, but I did mess with the original. The regular original Captain Crunch. <laughs> Amazing. It's. <laughs> you just had you just you just went back right there. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a moment. <laughs> yeah, we had that. I used to love that too. You know what I mean? It never messed up the roof of my mouth, but like you said, I know how to chew. And if you wanted it to get soft, it had to sit in there for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you had to sit it. We had to let it sit in the bowl for like two days for it to get soft. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought I was grown when I got to be like 12, 13 I started eating Frosted Mini Wheats I thought I was grown I just thought that was a more mature cereal Frosted, frosted Mini Wheats is good but it makes you shitty like Jesus <laughs> Christ that thing cleans your system out <laughs> you got some issues eat Frosted Mini Wheats you won't have them no more no more it's like they put all the fiber in that shit right? oh, yeah. every, like every bit of it it's a, it's just a brick of fiber every time you eat. It. It's just like a, a, about a small ropes of fiber in every, every bite. If it came down to it, and I say this because, you know, y- your music is laced with threats. Um, if it came down to it and it absolutely seemed like your only way out, could you perform a drop kick if you had to? Oh, that was my go-to thing when I was little. Or yeah, I would drop kick the shit out of somebody. <laughs> yeah, why? Why you not perform a drop kick? I would do that with all pleasure of putting my foot in your face while I drop kick you. This come from? Did this derive from wrestling? We was watching wrestling coming up. Right. Okay, so we saw that, and we used to play around in the backyard and do that to each other. I was never able to execute. A real drop kick in a real fight. Have you done that before? In a real fight? No, I'm not leaving my feet in a real fight. I may leave one foot and put one foot in your face. But I, I mean, because the whole purpose is it's like you're going to fall on the ground. Now you got to get up after you drop kick somebody. <laughs> and that, it's just like, you know, what if the drop kick doesn't happen correct like you thought it would be? Now you're on the floor. You just threw yourself on the floor for no reason. Right, right. Now you got it back up it's a disadvantage unless you told like they totally don't see you coming and you catch the drop <laughs> back. Yeah. but i still don't understand why you would do that unless you just caught an idiot flashback and just want to do it for the hell of it i know a couple people like when i was a little kid that actually did drop kick people in real fights i mean but they picking shots you know what i mean but they cat didn't even want to smoke you know what i mean so that's not wouldn't even count that for real um What's the most unbelievable thing you've personally witnessed or been a part of during your time in hip hop? Like you talking about like a hip hop story? Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm about to say if it was some street shit, I can't tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, this ain't Vlad. We don't do that. <laughs> that time when like shook ones was kind of on fire, like just beginning to catch fire. And it was a show with uh, Mob Deep and Karis One. It was sparking madism, was popping for them at the time. And Mob Deep performed, and it took them three tries to get past the uh, the beginning of Shook Ones. So the, the crowd was going crazy. Like, you know, it start, you hit a click to cut. Oh, uh, yeah, crowd going crazy. Prodigy, bless her soul, was like, yeah. To all the killers and the hundred dollar billers. And then they stop it. Crowd was going nuts, 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 nuts. <laughs> then they do it again. Yeah. To all the killers and the hundred dollar billers. They go crazy. Stop, stop, stop. Then the third time. To all the killers. And somebody, well, if you was on stage, it was on the right. If you was in the crowd, it was on the left. Somebody got their ass whipped. I don't know. Happen. All I know is just, I, I don't know if they could take the situation, but 
Oh, somebody got too high on this note. Somebody got their ass whipped. We was like, oh, okay, turn it back on. To all the killers and the hundred dollar <laughs> And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, this shit is, this yeah. shit on here. Was that in New York? Did that happen in New York? Yeah, in New York. I mean, listen, I'm a guy from Cleveland. And just to say this, um, you know, New York is... Yo, hey, any promoters in uh, Cleveland, book me for a show in Cleveland. I want to come to Cleveland. Though. Word up. We came up on the New York stuff. I mean, we talk about, I hate to date myself, but right, um, it was the Curtis Blow, it was the Run DMC, it was the Fat Boys. You know? uh, ever, I don't understand why people say that I hate to date myself. People should be happy of the age they are because you survived a lot of shit and you've seen a lot of shit. With age comes wisdom. So you should not be afraid of saying date yourself. I'm, I'm, well, that's, thank you for that. Thank you. Right. I've only got two choices. We can either die or we just move forward. Yeah. You know I mean? 48, and I'm proud of it. I don't give a fuck. My deep favorite group of all time, you know what I mean? When I first heard Shook Ones, it was like, and that's that's what I was trying to talk about, because out here in Cleveland, even when I was trying to get people to listen to Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt, because a lot of people was listening to like Master P and other, other kind of stuff. When the Shook Ones thing happened, it seemed like everybody, it was innate. It just touched you. So I can only imagine what it was like in that venue when you, like you write that whole buildup. It's just the whole album though, the infamous album in and of itself. Mm. It's got so many moments on there. Um, so I thank you for sharing that story with me. That night I saw you at Sony Hall for the Rock Marciano show. Did you stay for the whole show that night? Yeah. Okay. What was your um impressions of the actual show? And what do you feel about the the, the people that was on that line? I know we had Flea Lord, Rome, um, Stove Guy was out there. How do you mm. how, you what do, what do you feel about like what Stove Guy's doing right now, particularly? I mean. It's it's good. I mean, I love to see black people win, but it's just you know, it just sounds like he's in the Rock Marcy lane. What did you think about the Big Daddy K Karras one versus? I'm assuming you saw it. No, it was dope. That was dope. It, it was dope. It was dope. I think Karras won. I mean, we probably have to look at the sales because Kane did sell a lot of records, but. You know, Karis one came out at a time that criminal minded shit. But I think, you know, as far as sometimes uh, Karis one was a little muffled. And I think Kane delivery was better. You could hear Kane clearer. You know, I think he had a little struggle with the 20 songs. So that's why, you know, the freestyles played a part of it. But, yeah. you know, still was clear. I think. I really think they should have matched Kane up with Rakim because that was a talk at one time. Yep, yep. I don't I don't know. It's, you know, I think it would have been better. Who would be a perfect versus opponent for Illa G? Uh, at this moment, it would ever have to be Rock Marciano. Why do you say Rock Marciano? Ain't nobody else fucking with me. Yeah, okay. So is it all slap hoes eat bacon or does Illogy stop sometimes to smell the flowers? Maybe take in an opera or, or go to a farmer's market and, and grab fresh apples. Slap hoes eat bacon. <laughs> um, family life. Have you, have you settled down with somebody? Slap hoes eat bacon. <laughs> Are there any collaborations coming in the future that might surprise some people? I can't say nothing until it happened. You know, it's, it's one that I'm waiting on. And other than that, I, I mean, until it happened, I'm not going to say anything. Right. Me and who have talked about doing things. When it happened, you'll know about it. Got you. Um <laughs> what's your guilty pleasure music something you listen to that most people wouldn't expect you to listen to rock music oh wow okay who you who you be rocking with on the rock side um i think my favorite rock wise is uh metallica oh okay and some inner sandman i know that's quite a few things like uh 
I think one of the most classic best songs ever that gets me hyped when I work out is uh, Jump by Van Halen. That song is so dope. I really understand. I'm no joke with this music shit. I listen to a lot of shit. Bro, listen, I'm the same way. Um, I used to listen to that song a little bit when I was when I was younger, right? Um, but then I think I seen behind the music Van Halen and how when they came out with that album, I think that name of the album was 1984. Um, and how controversial it was that was it Eddie decided to bring in the synthesizers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. And that was like and that, it didn't even occur to me when I was a kid what a departure that was from what they would consider real rock music. Um, mm-hmm. And I think David Lee Roth. Oh, man, for a hip hop channel, we going down a, a tangent right here. But I think mm-hmm. David Lee Roth was kind of. He was the best man for them. I think David Lee Roth was the best front man for Van Hill. Yeah, definitely the best front. Man. Yeah. I messed with the with, with his solo joint. I actually bought his tape, the solo joint when he did um I'm just a gigolo. It was a four song like EP joint he did. I even bought that joint. But then in the 90s, I started messing with the rock kind of heavy. So like the grunge thing. I know a lot of people that's rock purists don't they don't mess with the Nirvana and the and the Pearl Jam and the, and the cranberries. And I mess with that. The whole, you know what I mean? Courtney Love and all that. Anybody else you listen to on the rock side besides Metallica? And Van Halen? I Me, mean, if, it's, if it's a dope song, a dope song. So, I mean, it's it's different people. I like, I got my certain songs that I like, you know. Okay. Um, I think this was on your IG. Put a thing up. Uh, Dear Black men and women, we're at war with too many people to be at war with each other. Um, you, you remember what inspired that particular post? And then can you expound on that idea? I mean, we got a pretty much we got America to deal with. We got a, a camera faced on us. The, the you know, whatever we do, it's like it's it's totally on us. You know, everyone as so-called black. I mean, people need to learn what that is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm black and I'm proud. Like, that's good between us. But to the jungles of America, it's not good because that's black, it's not a race, nor is it, uh, you know, we have no country to claim, even though this is ours and they done took it over. Mm -hmm. We have no country to claim. So this is why the people of America, the government like doesn't respect us. But anyway, it's like, we, we have too much to, you know, to fight each other. We need to pull together and, you know, fight for each other. I'd fight against you. I appreciate that. And one last question. Do you ever see us going back to a, a time where we could get MCs on wax challenging each other lyrically and they could just keep it on wax? I mean, it was a that was part of the whole thing about like LL Cool J, like, right? A lot of times, that don't be the artist. That be the friend that they can't control that's in the street. And they doing anything to keep, you know what I'm saying, that's just a mentality. You know what I'm saying? I was, I'm not going to lie, I was one of those idiots at one time, too. Mm. Because that, you know, a lot of situations, I was willing to really go too far with it. And it's, 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 it's the mentality of the risk name. It's like the leader person. A lot of rappers hang around people that they can't control because they weren't in the street. Right. With me, I was in the street. And all the people that would come with me, you know, have at least can, you know, yo, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you know, saying you got to be strong enough if somebody not doing, you know, what you asked them. Or I'll be like, son, chill out. Mm-hmm. If they can't, get them the fuck out of here. Yo, well, who the fuck, you know what I'm saying? You gotta go. You gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, it's it's not, people don't understand a lot of things are not easy when you come into a little bit of money of situation or a stat, uh, you know, uh, status. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they get friends they really not cool with or, you know, 
yo, you know, they hear somebody be like, yo, son, I, you know, I do whatever, just let me know. Man, man, you know, shit changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we can do it. I think everything is progress. If you listen to battle rap, a lot of things are said, you know what I'm saying? And they keep it there. At one point in time, it was a lot of fighting, tussling and all that other shit, but we get it together. You know what I'm saying? The people don't, a lot of people don't understand or overstand the power of words. Do you know when your next project is coming out? Your next album? Um, don't know, but I, I do have a title for it, but I don't know. You don't, and you're not going to tell me the title right now. I can tell you the title is called uh, Oatmeal Soda. Oh, <laughs> Oatmeal Soda. These these things don't. They don't leave your psyche. Sway cigarettes, fried apple juice, oatmeal soda. I'll never forget that. Nobody, if anybody asks me what's his next album, I forget everything too. But because you said oatmeal soda, I'm not going to forget that. Ella G, thank you so much for being gracious with your time and coming in, sitting in on the Mike Power Show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike Powers. Mike Power.